who's ever heard it, oh, I wouldn't have done it that way. Yeah. Um, I just don't like it. Really constructive feedback. <coughs> nobody, nobody told me the budget, so I just picked the biggest instance. That's a good one. My favorite at the moment is, oh, I would have written it in Rust. That seems quite popular at the moment. And we've even seen people like um, avoid certain reviewers, so take time off, because Fred's a tough reviewer. Um, so I'm gonna kind of share um, a bit about custom lenses and how we've used those to kind of solve some of those problems and um, make the process a bit painful, particularly for people who've um, not got much experience in going through that kind of process. I'd say it can be quite daunting. Um, so yeah, we really want the, the design process to be fair and transparent. Um, in terms of cost, cost optimization, you also want, you know, um, think about like right sizing. So I think a lot about, well, is it good enough? Is it good enough to go into production? It doesn't have to always be perfect, but it has to be good enough. Uh, and also remove kind of that emotion from the design uh, review process and concentrate on kind of facts and figures, really. Um, so AWS have got um, a well-architected tool, um, which is a service to provide a kind of steady process to go through the process of managing your architectures and applying AWS best practice. So in kind of simple terms, it's, it's there to help document and so then suggest improvements required for the suggested workloads architectures, and it's a risk-based approach. And quite rightly, you know, it's an AWS tool, so it suggests the AWS prescribed way of doing things, which you, know, you can understand. But life isn't always that simple. You might have um, specific company policies that you need to adhere to. AWS don't know about those. You might have internal best practices. You might not all be all in on AWS, so we use GitLab, as you'll see in a few moments, for example. We don't use CodeCommit, and we don't use, um, we use it as GitLab for our CI, CD. Uh, we use Dynatrace for monitoring. Um, you might have specific compliance policies, depending on what industry you're in. You might also have customer policies that need to be applied. And you might have things like local laws that you need to um, um, apply to your, your architectures. Um, so this is where custom lenses come in. So take you through very quickly how you create one. So this kind of section defines um, the custom lens itself. So a bit of metadata, name of the custom lens, a bit of a description. Then you create your pillars. Um, all of this, as you can see, is defined in JSON. Um, so these pillars can map onto the AWS pillars, but you can also define your own pillars as well. You then set out your questions. So this is guiding people through um, where you essentially want them to get to in, in the design review. And you guide, the, guide them further with choices. Um, so they select which choice, choices they've implemented or not implemented. These are the, in response to the questions that you've asked. So it's a guided route through the design review. And then the questions and the choices are then evaluated against a set of rules. And from that, um, the tool outputs risks. So this is a complete lens on a, on a screen. Um, it is the very first question in the foundational technical review is used by APN. Um, so having an, uh, a foundational technical review um, is quite important for partners we found. Um, we're an ISV, um, so it's a, a prereq for further, winning further designations such as financial services competency. Um, we need to maintain these in order to maintain our partner level um, and the support we get from AWS. Um, it's also um, good in pre-sales, we found. Um, it's very all, all well and good me going and saying, yes, we have um, good security posture, we have high, high, high reliability, but of course I would say that. If we have AWS um, validating that from an external perspective independently, that gives our architects credibility in those pre-sales engagements with customers. So I said we use GitLab, so we control, as the, the lenses are defined in JSON, we put all of this into to GitLab, and this uh, allows us not only to version control um, the lenses, but also create transparency. So here's one that we've updated recently. So back in August, the FTR criteria changed. It was quite a big change. So we created a new feature, a merge request here, um, so everybody can see um, the changes that we've made and why we've done them. We sent that out for review, so we have to, as a 
we're a quite a small team of architects, so we normally lead on this, but we have to get sign off from our cybersecurity team. So Chris works in cybersecurity. He wasn't quite happy with one of the, 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 uh, um, the kind of default rules in FTR, so he wanted the, the condition changing, and also he wanted um, some extra uh, description adding into one of the pieces of guidance that we put into that lens. So happy to help Chris out. Um, so this is a short demo of that workload, uh, that uh, lens being applied to a workload. So basically, if you've not seen the well architecting tool before, you ask, answer a series of questions and you add notes to add context. And that certainly helps the AWS person coming in at a later date to review it. Um, on the right hand side, you have all your helpful resources and guidance. We'll see more of that in a minute. Uh, one of the things that um, is in part of the FTR criteria is that you have to do regular design reviews. So we're using this process to help us facilitate that and also provide that as then the evidence um, to AWS that we're meeting that criteria for the designations that we get rewarded. So the person's got to this section in the, the FTR uh, around backups and they're unsure about that. So you can see we've clicked on the helpful links and rather than going to an AWS web page, this is taking it taking us to our SharePoint architecture portal where we've got all of the best practice from AWS, but we've also defined our own CDL best practice around backups. So we've got the link to the company backup procedure and we've actually got a backup blueprint which covers the vast majority of backup use, use cases we've got. So we use AWS backup and to help the engineers even further, we've actually got a Terraform module. So you can go straight to the Terraform module and you know that if you use that module, you'll deploy your application with a backup solution that meets the FTR criteria and you can get your badge for your application. So now we've got that guidance, we can tick the boxes. And finally, you get a set of risks. So this helps you then dip in your next iterations, next, next sprints, work through the risks and either mitigate them or reduce them. So we've got a medium risk here um, that we've not been fully through the um, uh, design review, should apply for more competencies, et cetera. It's telling us what the improvement plan actually is. So um, I hope you've seen there um, that um, how custom lenses can help you with um, making the design review process less daunting, help with transparency and fairness, remove emotion from the process, give engineers clarity on what the quality gates need to be, and also get your architectures um, establish more credibility with your customers by having them validated externally by AWS. Thank you very much for listening. <laughs>